As Gartner said in its top 10 strategic technology trends for 2015, all roads to the digital future lead through security, but are businesses safeguarding your privacy as they increase their security? Alan Scott is MD of F-Secure. Most people understand security uh, from both a consumer and a company perspective. We're well used to, to security of protecting our goods, protecting information from dan danger and unauthorized access. And privacy in itself is actually, in terms of data, is the protection of that data, it's the information. 89% of internet users say they avoid companies that do not protect their privacy. And in fact, 93% of all data breaches are through human error. And when we have all these devices around, you think about it, if that information is leaked, would you prefer that information to just be the dead raw data or for it to be encrypted? If it's encrypted, even if it's hacked, a hacker can't get access to the underlying information and thus you're protected. Companies that fail to act on the privacy and security issue won't just be hit financially in a data breach, their reputation can be damaged and it can be hard to regain trust of their customers. Financial seems quite obvious, but one is that you can actually be fined um, by the government for uh, breach of data, which is against the Data Regulation Act. So that's the first thing. And obviously, once you lose that data, not being having that data available to your customers, a loss of business. The Information Security Breaches Survey said that the average SME has increased the amount they've lost from data breaches from 65,000 to 115,000 a year from the previous year, which was 35 to 65,000. The second area is, is loss of reputation. And I think reputation is one of those things that you, you spend a long time building up with your customers. And obviously, if you're leaking their data out, as we've seen with recent uh, hacks with eBay, and target, and in fact, with uh, a UK organization called The Office, it directly impacts your brand. And that leads to the third one, which is the biggest one, which I think has been outlined in those examples, is trust. And trust is something that is very hard to gain from a consumer. And once you lose that trust, it takes you, you know, 100 times more effort to get that back. So just look at what happened to um, the office. They actually were hacked into an old database uh, that they were no longer protecting with their, their security systems. It was easy to get access to. And clearly that didn't fit into their security uh, policies. And that was a leakage of privacy data of their customers. So now they've got to regain that trust and do a lot of PR and positioning and implement security policies to gain that back. So what should businesses be doing? What's best practice to avoid the damaging data breach? They shouldn't think that they aren't uh, a target for attack. Um, most companies are a target for attack. So it doesn't matter whether you're small or large. Um, hackers and criminals want to get access to that. In fact, a report by Cyber Black Monday um, states that the actual cyber market is worth more than the illegal drug trade. But the first thing they should really store data securely. Second thing is don't release data to the wrong people. In fact, always get permission and be very wary when copying or transferring data. I think a lot of people just send, think that they're sending an email that's fairly innocuous. They make attachments with confidential information on that, not realizing that actually it's very easy to get access to information. And the last one is don't store important data where it can be easily accessed. So on USBs and the other thing is on just external hard drives that you leave lying around. The interesting thing is a government survey recently showed that eight out of 10 of the big companies have actually been subject to, to serious hacks. Um, and if you look at it from the big companies' perspective, where those hacks have come from is, is often through the supply chain. And the reason for that is that the supply chain is often the weakest link being that they haven't implemented the security and privacy policies that a big company has invested in. So for a small company, it's not just about your own data, it's about the data of your, your, your partners and your suppliers and your customers. Avoiding a data breach is the goal here, but there are other benefits for companies that take security and privacy seriously. The benefits of implementing a security and privacy policy go far beyond just an IT manager implementing some software. First, you, you create an environment that's secure for your employees. They feel that they can come into work, they can store information on their computers, on the systems in, in the office and the systems that are in the cloud and, and know that that data is secure. 
isn't isn't going to be accessed by uh, third party organizations. The internet over the last 20 years has grown into a phenomenal marketplace, but it's unregulated and people really don't know whether they're going to a place which is secure or not. So we're seeing a lot of our partners working with us to create a, a safe environment, a trusted environment to doing business. Virgin, for example, and uh, TalkTalk Talk are working with us on a sort of trusted and internet initiative which make, make sure that consumers feel that they're going to a place that their data is is, is in a safe place. We're also working with non-governmental organizations such as Don't Spy On Us and Open Rights Group to drive the whole initiative of privacy, not just to the consumer, but also to get regulation change to protect data privacy for the individual.